think, what, the, what in what does their wealth exist? In stocks. And bonds. And what is this? Credit. Anticipation of future income dealt with as present fortune. Actually, to add something to it, if the credit would not um, be this power uh, to, to purchase everything, no one would ask for a credit. And this is actually the basis why the companies and everyone uh, is yeah needs the credit because of its power. This is one point about that. In one sense, one could say credit is capitalistic wealth in its most perfect form. If it's not generating growth, it's worth nothing at all. If it's not used to make more money out of money, then it's worthless. That's something that the crisis teaches us. As soon as the debts upon which banks like Lehman Brothers and other investment banks were getting very, very rich, as soon as those debts no longer function as capital, as no longer as soon as they no longer find purchasers for the debts that they're issuing, the securities, then that money dis or that wealth disappears. In that sense, true capitalistic wealth, it's either growing or it's dying, to use that phrase. And in that sense, it's also equivalent to money that's earned from hard-earned exploitation. If the money of a company producing toothbrushes is not used to accumulate capital, it's worth nothing at all. Also something that is proved by the crisis. As soon as firms no longer have the money to access credit, the money they might have is worthless. In that sense, the crisis demonstrates the identity in this economy of money and credit, namely as capital. If it's not growing, it's worthless. And that's why I guard against saying credit is merely a fantasy. I would say that's where you really see what capitalism is all about. There's got to be more questions. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's not a new idea there. You know, that's one of the big uh, bones of contention with the, the uh, Muslim fundament fundamentalists. Usury is uh, considered a great evil. Mm -hmm. They don't you know, they don't loan money to the interest that's uh, been on a long time. Mm -hmm. Even that uh, seems to me reading the Bible, Christ in the in the temple, the money lenders. You know, this goes on and on. It's, it's it's been around a long time. It snowballed this way out of hand is what happens. People, you know, everybody, they get a little bit and they can leverage it. A little bit of that, what you call Ponzi scheme. I think we, as it gets further and further in field, that's what you run into. All of a sudden, you end up like Bernie Madoff. Well, in, in a certain sense, you know, saying a Ponzi scheme or a pyramid scheme. In a certain sense, the business, let's say, let's take these so-called special purpose vehicles, yeah, or the, let's say, the origin of the current crisis. A pyramid scheme in what sense? If the business isn't growing, then what is revealed is the whole business is dense. As soon as there's no longer growth, no one can get paid off. Everyone is ruined. But I would warn against using terms like that, saying it's a Ponzi scheme, a pyramid scheme, that everybody knows is a crime. Yeah, an exaggerated, irresponsible kind of business. Instead, I would, turn it, I would turn the issue around and say, that is really the principle of the wealth in this capitalist society. Even if you're not committing a crime with your lending practices, the same principle holds true. If you're not drawing in more money and using it to accumulate more money, then the money is worthless. That's a positive scheme. Perfect <laughs> definition of it. As long as they keep growing, everything everybody's happy. But it's not a, it's not a particularity of the banks that helps the General Motors. If you made a distinction, which what you're saying, it's not possible. 
and motors of buying labor and whatever, only to do the same thing, to end up with more money in their hands than they had before, just like the bank, whatever whatever people do, which is pointed out, whatever they do with the lending itself, but he's lending actually, looking at capitalistic money, himself money, as an entity, saying, I want to make more. And he could end up very well, just as speculative, he does, he doesn't ask, are you buying my stuff? He's putting it on the market, like everyone else. So, I don't see really the difference, first of all, from the nature of it, and second, uh, what is the difference between the interest or the surplus you made? You know, it, because you had, I, I heard, it might be a false accusation, but it was kind of a moral standing and saying, the interest, lending someone is taking interest, huh? which by the way, Islam do the same, they just don't call it interest, they, they call it a lending, uh, uh, you know what it is? Lending uh, wage, maybe? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much the same thing. They, they say, I, I can't take interest, but you have to give me five dollars for lending you a hundred. Right. <laughs> Whatever it is. So, I, I wasn't clear on how you how you do the dif differentiation between those who just basically give themselves credit and say, but the aim is make an extra profit, or just do this do another person who has some money in his hands left over and say, oh, take mine, but please surplus and give. I need more than I have given you before. This is what this economy does, and it's different roles, one of the finance capital, the other go to the burden of buying people, it's just a joke, but I, I heard it just a question to you. I, I don't understand your question, Did anyone else? <laughs> Maybe, because I don't want to repeat it really. It is just because you said it goes back to Christ and it, it sounded like lending is the crime. I want to say making more money is not a crime, but it's just what this economy does in, a, in different ways. Sometimes it's called interest or surplus value. Yeah, and the lending for it, it would do it to, to get interest. That was the idea. That's useful. That's what it's called. It seems to me that's what we're talking about the problem here. This whole thing okay. of leverage is way out of control. When it goes out of control, it's. Uh, yeah. I actually want to say something a little differently. Okay. Um, you know, terms like usury or a Ponzi scheme, they make a distinction that I don't think is tenable. And what that is is the distinction between, let's say, a responsible use of credit and an irresponsible use of credit. Yeah, seed money is necessary for certain larger projects. And that's okay. what, what point I would want to bring up, too. Yeah. Okay, seed money is uh, necessary for certain projects. Yeah. And what you mean by that is in order to be able to construct anything, let's say a bigger project in the society, you need money. In the same, you need credit. You need borrowed money. Okay. That's often taken as a reason to say banks, let's say at a certain modest level, are very important, are crucial to any production, uh, process of production. And I would say banks are certainly useful for production in this economy. But that's not a reason to praise banks or to call for modesty on the banks. That's actually an indictment of this economy. That's what I was talking about in the beginning. Actually, what do you need credit for? Not at all for the physical process of production. It doesn't make labor any easier. People still have to work just as hard. It doesn't make machines run better. They still have to be designed, implemented, etc. Credit is useful for getting hold of all these goods. Yeah? But it's interesting. First of all, you have to get access to them. What does that teach us? That teaches us that the sources of material wealth in this society are not simply there for the purpose of producing it when there's a need to create certain, Marx called them, use values, useful goods. Rather, they're all subject to the exclusive ownership of their owner. They're all subject to the rule of private property. That's why, because of that case, let's say, because that's the case, credit is useful in a society of private property. But because it's a society of private property, you can have the absurd situation that we call an economic crisis, which is not a lack of any material goods or sources of wealth. There's actually too much of it. For what purpose? Not for actually building things that people need, but for the purpose of turning money into more money. 
because that's the purpose and because material production is subordinated to that fact credit is both useful and a credit crunch is fatal and where I'd like to get you is not to say some banks are modest and helpful and other banks are criminals Ponzi's, Madoff's. I'm sure it's going to be a Madoff. I'm sure the word will become Madoff's key now. <laughs> but I'd like you to it gets you to learn what the crisis actually teaches us. There was a Madoff, that's certain. But you had a whole banking system that, in principle, is doing the same thing. Instead of calling that criminal and actually saving the reputation of certain banks and capitalist companies, uh, I would make my objection a little more principal, <laughs> to put it another way. I would say that's an indictment of the purpose of production in this economy and not a reason to separate the Ponzi's from, let's say, the responsible bankers of old.